Hello neighbors, welcome back. This is Ariana from The Therapist Next Door. So let's jump right in. You're here because you want the top three tips for healthy relationships. And I'm here to share them with you as a therapist that has over 14 years of experience and couples are my favorite unit of treatment to work with. So here we go. First tip is a weekly check-in. So I recommend that all my couples take anywhere from five to 15 minutes once a week on a regular basis to have a weekly check-in. What should take place in this check-in should be taking turns giving each other positive feedback. So you could name one thing that went well that week, one thing that you're grateful for, maybe a situation that was handled well, and share that information with your partner. And then you should also take turns giving each other one piece of constructive feedback. Now, this might sound really simple, but a lot of my couples have a hard time being consistent with this, but when they are, it makes such a big difference. Why? Because feedback loops are really at the center of anything successful, whether it be a business or a relationship. So if you were to start a business, you would probably target some goals, you would look at some strategies, and then maybe a week or two later, you would meet again to see how everything was going, to see the performance. You might even use graphs or charts and is considered a feedback loop. So it's really bringing that into your relationship. And when you make time consistently to meet with your partner and talk about what's working and what's not working, it really helps to make those tiny tweaks to continue to improve your relationship. And it also gives you an opportunity to give your partner some positive feedback, which I think is really important too. Let's move on to tip two. Tip two is working as a team. This might sound simple, it might sound cheesy, but there's a lot more that goes into that than we realize. So oftentimes we as human beings tend to be egocentric. We think of ourselves a lot, but working as a team really means being collaborative, keeping your partner in mind when you're making decisions, attacking problems instead of attacking each other, uh, showing appreciation, being respectful of each other. So working as a team is going to make your relationship just a lot better. And it's going to function a lot more healthily for you guys. So work as a team. One thing I want to say here is make sure that you are making decisions together. So let's say that you decide that you're going to make a big purchase or you're thinking about moving or changing careers. If you've been dating for a while or you're engaged or you're married, your partner should absolutely be involved in those decisions because your decisions are going to affect them too. And so it's not really thinking about asking for permission, but more so collaborating because two heads are better than one. And you want to make sure that whatever decisions you're making are beneficial for the relationship. So you want to kind of think about what's best for the we if you want to be in a healthy relationship. So that is tip number two. Moving on to my last tip, tip number three is fight fair. In all relationships, there is going to be conflict. We don't want to avoid conflict. We just want to learn how to do it right. So these are some of my tips for how to fight fair. The first one would be using timeouts. So if you've never heard of this before, basically what happens when we get angry is the part of our brain that is used for decision making actually shuts down and we go into more of that animal impulsive part of our brain. And so what happens is we can't really dialogue or think clearly or rationally. And so the best thing that you can do is actually take a timeout so that you can cool down and come back. So the way that I recommend timeouts to be used is either person can call the timeout. You can call it if you yourself are feeling like you're getting angry or if you notice your partner's body language and you think a timeout would be good, a, the actual words timeout can be used and you can decide how long the timeout can be. Typically, you want to kind of be around an hour. Um, it could be a little less, uh, anywhere from 30 minutes to 60 minutes. And so what happens is that you will go and this is an opportunity not for you to stew in your anger, but maybe take a walk, take a shower, do some deep breathing, do a meditation. Maybe even think about some of the positive things that you love about your partner. So you can keep that in mind and keep a balanced perspective. Then you're going to come back at that designated time. So that's really important. Make sure you come back when you say you're going to come back. And then you're going to try again. There's a whole host of communication techniques that I could recommend. I'm not going to go into that. Basically, 
to keep it simple, using I statements and reflective listening before you move on to problem solving would be the formula there. I'll break that down in another video. But with the timeout, again, you want to call the timeout, you want to say how long it'll be for, and you want to come back at the designated time and try again. Now, if for whatever reason conflict escalates again really quickly, you can call another timeout. And sometimes you may need to even shelve an issue for the next day or until you have a therapy session with your partner, but these are all things that should be agreed upon. So that's the first important piece of how to fight fair. The next thing I would say is tackle one thing at a time. A lot of times when I see couples fighting, they wanna kind of throw everything in the kitchen sink at each other, and this is really not helpful. When we are in a conflict and you know our partner's talking, Oftentimes we do feel under attack. So when you're getting, you know, one, two, three, four, five issues thrown your way, it's going to be hard to get past the first one or two. You're already feeling defensive. So you really want to take that time and use that formula of tackling one thing at a time. Again, using those communication skills like I statements, reflective listening, and problem solving. Another thing that should be obvious in terms of fighting fair is no yelling, no name calling, no threatening. So this is really important. Again, it's just keeping respect at the forefront, making sure that you don't cross boundaries or that you do or say things that you later can't take back. This is why going back to that first tip, timeouts are really helpful with this. Another thing is becoming a really good listener. So when I say reflective listening, what you're doing when your partner is talking is that you're not waiting for your turn to talk or to defend yourself or to react. You're actually trying to listen almost as though you were gonna be quizzed on what they're saying. So you really wanna understand their perspective. Hopefully they're being vulnerable and they're using I statements that you can use to you know, be empathetic towards what they're going through. And so you, again, really wanna be a good listener and it really doesn't help to argue your partner's feelings or their perspective. At the end of the day, our partner's perception is their reality. So we kind of just want to start there and work there. So for example, what I mean by that is if your partner perceived you to be flirting and you didn't think you were, you're going to waste a lot of time saying, no, I wasn't flirting and defending yourself when it's better if you approach it as asking your partner more questions about what specifically happened that made them feel that way. So you can learn from that and change it. And once you listen and you accept your partner's truth, you wanna just work on making repairs. A lot of this is hard because you really have to drop your ego. You might feel like you're right about something, but it, would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? So you really have to think about if your partner was hurt, yes, you can argue till the cows come home that you didn't mean to do whatever it was that hurt them, but that hurt still happened. So if the quicker you can get to just addressing that and making that repair, the better. And my last, Tip would be making repairs. I think I already alluded to that, but that basically is working on apologizing, making sure that you take accountability for any actions that hurt your partner or affect them in a negative way. So those are my top three tips for healthy relationships. If you wanna know more about this, please comment, like, and subscribe because this is the kind of content I wanna be giving you guys. But these are going to be really helpful tools that is going to help your relationship be healthy and even potentially help you level up into the kind of relationship that you have always wanted to have because it is possible. All relationships, good relationships take a lot of work and effort, but the payout that you get in the end is something that is priceless. So hopefully this was helpful for you. As always, let me know what you're wanting to hear more about and I will see you guys soon. Authentically yours, Ariana.